Hello everyone, my name is Dakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be taking a look at fuel power. We're going to start off with a build guide for a very simple fuel power plant, a perfect one for just getting started with fuel, and then we'll talk about how we can grow and extend it to any size fuel input we want, and then we'll also take a look at some variations and themes on the design, how you can use it to produce packaged fuel for your jetpack, and how you might be able to scale it up to last until you unlock the more advanced fuel types like turbo fuel or jet fuel, or even to get you into nuclear power. Let's get into it. Now the specific build we're looking at is gonna be using a single normal oil node with an oil extractor on it. That'll produce 120 crude oil per minute. But while we go, we'll also talk about how this can scale up if you are working on an impure node and only producing 60, or if you're working on a pure node or multiple nodes and can get 240 or even more oil into your plant. We're gonna start off by creating a six by 10 foundation platform. You want to make sure that any wildlife are safely out of the way before you start constructing. Next, we'll want to place down our refineries. We want to leave a two foundation gap, and then we want to place down enough refineries to handle our crude oil input. Since each refinery can handle 60 crude oil, since we're working with 120, we'll use two. But if you're working with a different amount of oil, just divide the number by 60 to determine how many refineries you need. Next, we'll connect those refineries with pipeline junction crosses to our fuel input line. We'll set each refinery to the default fuel recipe. That's the one that takes 60 crude oil per minute and produces 40 fuel and three polymer resin. And we'll connect up power to get the refineries started processing our fuel. All right, now we're gonna have to handle both the solid and fluid outputs on these refineries. Let's start with the solid output. We're gonna use conveyor lifts to create a bridge structure on the solid output of each refinery. At the bottom of those conveyor lifts, we'll place a, a conveyor merger. Now, if we target the bottom of the lift directly, it'll snap right in and fit perfectly. But we do wanna make sure that the green output arrow is facing towards the empty space that we left on our foundation platform. We'll connect these up with conveyor belts and then feed them into an awesome sink to process our polymer resin. Alternatively, we could process this into additional plastic or rubber. We'll take a look at that in our next design. To process the fluid outputs, we'll run a pipeline underneath the bridge structure and then loop it around to the center point of our foundation platform. At this point, we've used up five of our foundations and we should have five left. We'll connect this pipeline to the refineries with some additional pipes and junction crosses. As our final step, we'll place down four fuel generators. We wanna make sure that their fuel inputs are facing towards the center of the platform. We'll run the pipeline down the center of the platform and use junction crosses to connect it to the generators. At this point, I recommend letting the refineries run for a few minutes to fully fill each generator before turning on the plant. You'll know that the generator is fully filled when it gets to 50 units of fluid in all four generators. All right, now once our generators are fully stocked with fuel, we can go ahead and connect up power to activate the system. And that's it. This is a stable power plant producing a thousand megawatts of power. Again, this can be easily scaled. If you have an additional oil node nearby, say we wanted to tap this impure oil node over here, we could send that along the, sa the same input pipeline and simply run a third refinery in the remaining space, connect that in, and then add two more generators onto the end. So this design can be scaled in that way very simply to almost any size of fuel input. The limiting factor there is the amount of crude that you can supply in your pipelines. I'm using Mark 1 pipelines here, so I couldn't do that with more than 300 crude oil on, on the input line. However, if you do have more oil than that, you can build multiple plants and run them in parallel as well. Another quick tip, you can snap catwalks to the tops of the generators in order to connect them together. If you don't place the generators the perfect distance apart, you'll end up with gaps, but you can simply uh, snap onto the other side and you may get a little bit of overlap with your, uh, with your railings, but otherwise the catwalk works just fine. This can provide a useful way to move around these plants, particularly if you have a large plant. 
Note that most buildings have snap points like this, including the refineries as well. So. Let's take a look at a slightly more advanced version of the same design. All right, here we have another design for a variation on this power plant. This one's a little bit more advanced. In this case, we're uh, using four refineries to process 240 units of oil, which we're getting from one pump over there and another one around back. Those those pipe oil pipelines are being combined and sent into the refineries. And then the fuel is being sent into a bank of seven generators. Now, 240 fuel should provide for eight generators. So what we're doing with the excess is sending that across into a packaging facility. What we're doing is we're taking the excess polymer resin from our refineries, sending that over and combining it with water in another refinery to produce plastic using the residual plastic recipe. That recipe then, that plastic then gets sent into a constructor to be turned into empty canisters, and the canisters are then combined with the fuel in a packager in order to create the packaged fuel. Since since we have a big stockpile of packaged fuel, any excess as well as any excess resin or plastic are being sunk in the awesome shop. Now this version of the design produces 1750 megawatts of power, but also provides for that stockpile of packaged fuel. Now if you wanna continue working with fuel directly, we can scale up the plant to even larger sizes and use some alternate recipes to really squeeze every little bit of fuel out that you can get. Let's take a look at that design. Now for our next design, we're gonna be going a little further afield. If you don't want to build on the site of the crude oil nodes, you can ship the fluids across the map. The best way to do this is with trains. Here we have a train station hooked up to several oil nodes that are then moving the oil across the map to the location where we're gonna take a look at our next design. Now with both this design and our next design, we're gonna be taking crude oil and using the sort of optimal way to turn it into fuel. This is worth doing and it, and it makes these two setups particularly valuable because even later on, as you unlock more advanced forms of fuel like turbo fuel or jet fuel, you'll still need to produce that fuel as a part of that production step. So in so when you first unlock the fuel generators and want to build the and may want to build a plant like this, you can use it uh, and then construct the generators to burn that fuel. And then later on, as you unlock those more advanced forms, you can add additional processing steps to take the fuel you're already producing, convert it into turbo fuel, and then burn it in additional generators in order to increase your power output without having to necessarily tear things down. Now that's not something that we do with these designs, but it is a way that they can be adapted for advancement through the tiers. All right, now this is one of the more advanced designs for fuel, and I will post a link to the uh, Let's Play episode where I build this. I actually do a really thorough description and, and uh, time lapse of building the plant at that time, but I'll cover it briefly here as well. We are bringing in the crude oil from over yonder and sending that through and making sure we have a nice stockpile on hand in these uh in these fluid buffers but the, sending that into into a bank of refineries they use the heavy alternate recipe for the heavy oil residue this produces some polymer resin and heavy oil residue and uh, once again the polymer resin is just being sunk now that heavy oil residue this is a more much more advanced design so we're taking that heavy oil residue and combining that with some packaged water in another set of refineries to create packaged fuel now to get the packaged water, we have a stockpile of empty packages on site. Those are lossless. We use the same number that we, uh, you know, we reuse the same packages over and over again. So we don't need to worry about those as much. But to get the water, we are bringing in uh, pipelines from a bank of water extractors off to the left and sending those in. Each section of this plant uses 450 units of water. So we have four extractors to accommodate that. And we're using Mark II pipelines so that we don't overflow. That water is combined with our packages in a set of packages to create packaged water and the packaged water and the crude oil residue and the packaged water and the heavy oil residue are combined to create packaged fuel. That packaged fuel is then unpacked. So now the empty packages then flow back into the system and the fuel then goes into another set of storage tanks and on into the generator array. Now in this case, we would use 22 generators to produce 5,000 megawatts of power. So that's 21 at full speed and another one at 33.33% speed. This plant was originally built in a older version of the game where you needed more generators. So you can see the other wings have that. Again, I'll leave a link to this build in the description. This is a tier six build. It doesn't require blenders, but it does require some alternate recipes. 
One other design element I want to highlight with this plant is that we once again use gravity to assist with moving fuel from place to place. So each tier of the plant has the next sort of production tier where we're moving fluids to at a lower level. Uh, and this continues on through the packaging plant and into the fuel generators, which are the lowest tier. This means that the fluid will constantly be flowing downhill and prioritizing the next production stage. All right, I wanna look at one more design for a fuel power plant. Once again, we're bringing in our crude oil on a pipeline and sending that into some refineries to be turned into fuel. Now this is one of the most advanced uh, sort of standard fuel power plants you can get without getting into turbo fuel or some of the more advanced fuels that were introduced in 1.0. This plant, like the other one we looked at, produces a large amount of fuel which can then be adapted as a component step in a, in a power plant for turbo fuel, jet fuel, or ionic fuel. Uh, and this is a 20 megawatt plant. Now what we're doing is we're taking our crude oil and turning that into heavy oil residue, just like we were in our last design. We're sinking the polymer resin and we're sending the heavy oil residue on. Now instead of using a packaging plant here, we're using blenders with the diluted fuel alternate, which takes that heavy oil residue, mixes it with water to produce, uh, to produce fuel. That fuel is then uh, going on into a bank of generators. Now, when this plant, now when I first designed this plant, the generators were less efficient. So you actually need 22 generators with this design. And so what we can do is delete a bunch of these generators. And I've gone ahead and turned off power to the ones that we don't need anymore so that the rest can continue working. But we can go ahead and select our uh, fuel generator with our dismantle filter and then simply. Uh, select the remaining generators we don't want, delete those, and there you go. 22 generators producing 5,000 megawatts of fuel perfectly and perfectly efficiently. Once again, I'll post a link to the build guide for this particular power plant uh, in the description. It is an older video. I'm planning on doing a new version of it at some point, but uh, the only major change to it is that you only need 22 generators instead of the, I think, 30, 34 that I had listed on there previously. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments what you guys are working on in Satisfactory and would like to see uh, these sort of design and build guides for in the future. So drop a comment and let me know what you are looking for. My name is Likova and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.